from the cities um, islands and the rivers we move on to the mountain so guys which is the most uh, the most sacred mountain in the in hindu uh, jain jainism and buddhist uh, faiths kailash kailash uh, no there is one mountain which is even above that mount peru yeah yes so we now we are trying to find the location of this legendary mountain this said that mount meru is like a golden mountain that stands at the center of the world it is at the it is truly at the center of three major religions hinduism jainism and buddhism it is said to be the abode of the gods at its foothills are the himalayas and to the south of this extends bharatavarsha the area of the sons of bharata or the clan of bharata which will from which will name the bharat and bharat the name will come from so this mountain is very important in the three religions can anyone tell me which is the ruins which are there in the photograph these are also an important unesco world heritage site the ruins are today in what is cambodia this belong to a very massive hindu temple angkor wat yeah yes you can see the uh, five pillars they represent mount meru a representation of mount meru was built in far away cambodia that is the importance of the mountain in the religion according to a scripture called devi bhagata so on the east of meru is located the city of indra on which is named devadanika where all the gods reside to the south is the city of vyama which is a lot of death and what is hell and on the west is a great city of varuna which is called nimchona nimnochani which is where the sun sets and north is the city of moon named vibhavari so the entire cosmology is kind of based around this secret mountain now is the does the mountain have any uh, semblance is it is based on a real mountain or is it something which is what we call a literature allegory or is it like a simile or a metaphor the first and the easiest kind of uh, assumption is, is the mountain based in himalayas there is a mount meru in what is today a gharwal can you see the five peaks 1 2 3 4 and 5 this mountain in the region of gharwal is said to be mount meru and since it is himalaya all the land to south of it then can be called the bharatvarsha there is another uh, story that the mountain is somewhere in the arctic now this uh, theory was given by uh, lokmanya tilak because uh, it was his understanding that the uh, then aryans had their homeland near the arctic and then they kind of you know came migrated towards india there is also another uh, theory that says that this uh, mountain exists somewhere in the what is today the pamir range now can you tell me where this range exists now we found an, so in the earlier section we found another uh, symbol of hinduism kind of existing there the river saraswati so it is said perhaps the original homeland where the rigvedic religion was first written down was somewhere in the north of afghanistan in the area of the pommers and the river saraswati there however this is just a theory only future archaeological work will kind of tell us in detail what what is the actual story just there is even a mount meru in tanzania supposedly it lies literally on the equator so the supposed center of the earth it is also said that mount meru is not an actual mountain but it shows the um, the knowledge of cosmology which ancient indians had it's like an allegory for the earth's axis of rotation so on one side you have the sun and one side you have the darkness and how the sun kind of rises and sets and how the moon also kind of rises and sets so that is like an allegory for the earth's axis of rotation so who knows indians might ancient indians might have a very detailed scientific you know knowledge about astronomy which we are kind of you know just regaining it now again we will never know for sure who in the future some some of the archaeologists might find something buried in the ground but till then we can only guess and surmise now we go on to the next major city the city of ayodhya and the topic which is so hotly debated going across all over whatsapp our new channels all social media let's try to find about more about the city of ayodhya in its ancient times we will be kind of you know touching about happenings far back in the past much before the current temple of ayodhya which was built and destroyed by babar and then rebuilt now 
this events which are we are going to discuss would be more than 2000 years 2000 and more years back in the past according to the ramayan ayodhya was founded by manu he is the progenitor of mankind in fact he is like the first king of uh, hinduism both ramayan and the mahabharata describe ayodhya as a major city as a capital of the ishwaku dynasty of kosala including ramayan dashratha are the major kings of several t- ancient texts including the ramayan bhagavad purana which is the bhagavad gita and the padma purana kind of mention a legendary ayodhya was located on the banks of the sarayu river it is said that the ayodhya which is impregnable the city of gods you know, consists of eight circles and nine entrances within it there is a golden treasure dome the celestial world which is ever illuminated with light it is always uh, you know mentioned as a major and a massive city what we are would be try to find out where did the city exist the best the first kind of uh, assumption or the first guess of where the city the legendary ayodhya would have existed is did it existed on the present city of ayodhya like the location is still the same what is the proof for it uh, the present city of ayodhya also exists on the banks of the sarayu river as mentioned in the puranas many of the gupta era texts such as kalidasa's raghuvamsha and the brahmanda purana use ayodhya as another name of saketa now one has to understand that the ancient name of present present day ayodhya was saketa many other ancient texts which is called the vishnu spruti and the matsya puran mention ayodhya as a slight place of pilgrimage very similar to the present city of ayodhya also in as per of historical uh, archaeology kind of post a first century inscription which was issued by dhanadev who kind of described himself as the lord of kosala has been found at present day ayodhya which kind of tells that this might be the capital of the kingdom of kosala which was ayodhya so see how archaeology ties up into mythology however there are many other uh, older texts which kind of refute the possibility that the present city of ayodhya was the site of the legendary city what were the issues now the earliest settlement of modern ayodhya can only be traced as far as 800 bc file the city mentioned in the mahabharata and the ramayana are around at least 1000 years before this modern day ayodhya second problem the earliest inscription which mentions a place called ayodhya are from the gupta period which is around only 200 uh, ad which is around 1800 years before now if ayodhya had to exist during the time of ramayana it has to be there far earlier it can't be just 1800 years in the past also early buddhist and jain texts mention shravasti and saketa and not ayodhya as the major cities of the kosala region even the chinese travelers who came to this uh, land major uh, you know give a mention of shravasti and saketa and not ayodhya which is little disconcerting also rama's workshop is not started in ayodhya only post the middle ages the earliest temple of much later than around 2nd century ad the earliest temple is around 1000 1000 ad of rama we have haven't been able to find temples dedicated to lord rama to 4000 ad that makes you know the present the identification of the present city of ayodhya as the legendary ayodhya very difficult most probably the legendary city of ayodhya is still somewhere buried on the banks of the sarayu or on the banks of the river ganga somewhere in north india waiting to be found we come to the last part like what is the capital of the pandavas in the prastha the major city in what is today north of india it was the capital of the kingdom which was led by the pandavas in the mahabharata epic where was the capital of the kauravas hastinapur yes good there is a mention of a city called indapatta or indapatana in the not only in the pali language it's a buddhist text which is where it is capital it's called as the capital of the kuru kingdom but it was also mentioned by greek sources which came later on it was one of the five places which was demanded for the sake of peace by the pandavas to stop the mahabharata war there are the five villages for indraprastha swanprastha panprastha gagarprastha and tilprastha many of these places have uh, their uh, are real places that you can identify them on the map in fact swanprastha it is what is sonipat today however the kauravas said no 
and that led to the mahabharata war always it was the city was not only an important part during the mahabharata but also an important place during the mauryan times in fact this seems to be a major urban center center during the time of ashoka and uh, chandragupta maurya now it is always said that indraprastha is near somewhere delhi but does this have any you know a uh, real basis to it does this have any proof to it it is said that indraprastha is somewhere buried beneath an area what is today called purana killa until 1913 there existed a village called indraprath which is you know was within the wall the fort walls that village was subsequently removed by the britishers since 1960s we have massive archaeological excavations have started at the site now we have find uh, remains of uh, cultures and kingdoms which existed for more than 3000 years ago at that you can say at the time of the mahabharata war the problem was when the uh, pottery and all the th- other remains were unearthed they were kind of not in a single layer they were kind of mixed and kind of laying throughout the ground it is very important to note that how archaeology plays an important role in mythology generally when you are kind of digging underground you have to find the objects from a certain time period within a same strata of soil if the soil uh, kind of a texture changes the strata has changed and hence they are from a different time zone now whatever uh, material was found be- below purana killa they were found over different soil materials different soil textures so we can so archaeologists were not able to date them correctly because of this dating problem they have kind of you know launched a new excavation and a new investigation which will start sometime this year to kind of know how they can you know differentiate the different items which are found what antiquities which, which are kind of found at indraprastha you had something from a sunga period which is you know preceding the mauryan times you had a small ram you had beads and your other heads but you one has not been able to find something from the time of the majan padas and the preceding time where the mahabharata war took place so even till date we have not been able to find connect actually connect indraprastha to the city of delhi so yeah that is also another capital which is yet to be found now with that uh, we come to the end of this talk